Hello you guys, what's up? How are you all? We are back today again with another makeup style video. So something that I actually wanted to discuss with you guys for a bit now. I am also in Mexico, hence the more like simplistic hot background. <laughs> this is not how my house looks in Brooklyn. Um, so for today, I actually have some notes here. I wanted to share with you guys a kind of like rundown of makeup products that I did not purchase this holiday season that I am not going to be purchasing this holiday season for one reason or another. I have some pretty popular products. I'm going to go through all of them and share with you guys why I don't want to pick them up, why I want to save my money and how much money I end up saving by actually not purchasing these goods. Now holiday season I feel like is a great time to pick up just kits and just items in general because you really could get get a bang for your buck but i feel like sometimes we can all run into issues when we're just buying stuff just to buy and it's like oh my gosh i need this and then a month later you're like what was i really thinking so hopefully i won't get to that point since i actually just did a sephora haul but there are like i mentioned just still some items from sephora that i'm not going to be purchasing and for the third time. I'm gonna explain to you why, basically. And I love the fact that I'm gonna be adding the prices in at the end, you know, just to kind of see. Because the truth is, I wouldn't mind having these items in my life if you know what I'm saying, but I'm just not gonna buy it. The first item that I have here is the Natasha Denona Mini Baby. Yes, baby. Gold Ornament Eyeshadow Palette. First of all, baby. Love the name. You guys know I always refer to small, cute, small little things as baby because it's just the perfect way to describe. So this right here is her newest little edition. It's $19 and you get three different eyeshadows in here. Two mattes and one metallic. You get more of like a lighter... Um, tan matte a deeper brown and a gold i will say the color selection is actually pretty good because i feel like you know you could do a lot with this in what way in a way that like you can kind of build up the crease and put a nice sheet on the lid sometimes with her even five pan palettes it just could get a little bit difficult to come up with looks if you do generally use mattes and there, there's maybe only one matte and you're like you know what i would love more versatility with this you know and i actually spotted this in store and i uploaded a shorts on here as well as a reels on instagram it's adorable, for sure, the cutest thing ever. And I love Natasha Denona, I constantly mention it on my channel. The main reasons why I'm not gonna pick this up is a few. Well, firstly, I feel like it's a very limited palette. And for me, I love getting a few looks out of one palette. I used to be that girl who used to create the same look over and over and over and over and over again. And that's totally fine if that's what you do. Tons of people in my personal life do that because that's what they know they look good in and they just like, you know how the look looks and then they also tell me that they have a hard time creating other looks so they know they're just safe in, on that route by creating the same kind of look you know uh, so before i like got into like makeup makeup i used to also just do the same same look but these days like it's very rare for me to just do the same exact look so i just feel like this palette is very limited it might be nice for traveling but i feel like her five pen palettes do have a little bit more to offer and it's still cute small and tiny but you get two more extra shades considering the fact that this is also 19 dollars and the five pen palettes i think are 27 or 28 now they used to be 25 i've been noticing the prices go up with certain things you know if there's a color story that you like i feel like it is a bit more worth it you know i'm gonna go ahead and skip out on this little one but let me know if you guys are gonna be picking this up for yourself you know on instagram more of you guys told me you're skipping it so Keep me posted. All right, next up, I have the Patrick Ta Major Headlines Blush and Highlighter Palette Volume 2. This right here retails for $58. I'm not sure if it's going to be limited edition or not, but it's Patrick Ta's Blush Slash Highlighter Palette for Holiday 2022. I wasn't on here for about two-ish months, and during those two months, I actually did not purchase really any makeup. I can't remember even one thing that I did purchase. I mean, I was looking at all the new releases here and there, but I wasn't, I didn't purchase anything. And in a way, I'm kind of happy about that because I feel like a lot of times when new products release, I usually jump on it. And I would have jumped on this one because I love Patrick Ta's formula. And I'm like, okay, it looks amazing. $58, you get so much, all of that. But I just didn't end up buying it. Then I want to say somewhat recently, I went to Sephora just to kind of check out all the brand new releases. And I spotted this palette in store. And I was actually so happy that I did not buy this for 58 bucks. So basically what you get in here is two powder blushes, one highlighter, two cream blushes, and then one kind of like glossy see-through type of highlighter shade which I want to say is really nothing. I just feel like it's a good tactic of a product brands could release, but I feel like it doesn't do much. You know, just really take a clear gloss and do the same. It'll do the same thing. 
Anyway, so especially for that specific shade, that clear shade, such a waste. There was such an opportunity to put something even better in here. And for that one, it was like already like a percentage of the, of the palette was like a waste for me. Then the shade under that, the like highlighting shade, looked kind of sucky. Like it looked like it sucked. So then kind of like canceling both of those out, I only had four shades to work with. With the bright kind of like pink color, I felt like it was bright, but in person it didn't look as vibrant as I would have loved. And a lot of these other brands are actually releasing shades like that as well. So you could find them in the drugstore or with other brands, you know. And then the middle shade, I just felt like I'm not going to get this just for the two middle shades, even though again with those it could be duped, which I feel like everything in this world already could be duped because there's a million and one things out there. Um, but because it was Patrick's formula, I'm like, okay, maybe, you know, and, but then I'm like, I'm not going to spend $58 on a palette that I'm only going to use two shades. I can just always purchase one of his singular blushes that also come with a cream and powder. So, I mean, I guess with a lot of makeup, you can always break things down and be like, okay, hey, I'm not going to use this, or this looks very similar to that. But there is something exciting about buying new makeup, especially if you like the brand, if you want to try out the formula, if you're feeling something new. I feel like it's fun from time to time to get something new. But with this one, it just felt so, fell so short for me that... I just did not, I was not feeling it. I knew it was going to be a palette that I was for sure going to declutter, no question. And I did end up decluttering volume one because the shades just did not work out for me. So basically I'm skipping out on this and I do not regret it. Okay, next up we have the ABH Anastasia Beverly Hills Mini Glam To Go Eyeshadow Palette. This retails for $29. It's actually really, really cute and I feel like the price is, you know, just in the middle there. There are eight shades that are included in here and I do like the color story because I feel like it would be a really great everyday palette. Just like a nice easy one. Uh, the thing is with this one, I feel like I have other ABH palettes that have a similar vibe. So I was like, you know, I don't know if I really, really need this. And then when I was looking at swatches on this one, I felt like the shade Dusk just didn't seem as buildable and as deep and chocolatey as I would love. So like with deeper browns, I like when it has a super like major intensity to it because you can use it in a light way and blend it out or you can build it up and it can be very very like dramatic. With this one it just didn't seem like it had the intensity like I said that I was looking for and usually with more neutral palettes I love having that brown that like one specific brown to go from more of like a natural day look to more of like a sultry night upscale glam look type of thing also there are three shades in here that i feel like would look somewhat similar on the eye like the shade sunset dawn and softy just has like just like this it doesn't have the same tone but they're all so light in tone that i feel like i just don't know if it'll create such a major transition in the crease and then for the metallic shades the only two shades that i really fell in love with in here is sunburst and rosy which are those more rustic tones um, and so for 29 dollars, i felt like i could really use that money towards something else that i really feel like i'll probably go ahead and use this would probably be one of those palettes that maybe i'll use once or twice and then i'll feel like i just want more with this one and then I'll, i would eventually like declutter it so to save myself <laughs> the hassle i'm just gonna skip then we have the Sephora Favorites Blush and Glow Cheek Set. So there are five products in total that's included in here. We have the full size of the Melt Cream Blush and then the full size Orgasm Blush by NARS and then three deluxe size goodies. So you guys know if you've been here for quite some time. Sephora Favorites kits are personally like just kits that I love reviewing on here. I love breaking everything down, sharing with you guys swatches, just keeping you posted and in the loop of if the set is actually good or not. So. I want to say with this one, it could be a good one with the price factored in if you really don't own any of these items. But I feel like if you have tried most of these goods and you do maybe own one or two products, it just doesn't seem like a kit that, you know, I would want to pick up. I will also tell you, even though the NARS blush is a full size, the NARS Orgasm is such a like... I don't know, I just don't like that blush. I feel like everyone loves it and I might be in the minority with this one, but I feel like it emphasizes every detail and texture and pour on my face alive. That like, I look at my face and I'm like, whoa, <laughs> take it easy girl. So I'm just not that into it. It's not a blush that's a favorite. I think the shade is pretty. I would, I would love for them to take out the luminous vibe in there and the glitters, then I'd probably fall in love, but mainly for that specific color the tarte blush is a small like neutral shade which looks okay we also have a nude sticks blush which also looks okay and then the iconic uh, illuminator 
also I think looks okay. It's also super tiny. I want to say the Melt Cream Blush is probably the standout for me in this kit. And that one is in the shade Burnt Peach. I do own a different shade in the Melt from like the Melt Cream Blushes and I do love it. The formula is fantastic amazingness. If you could buy that on its own, I would definitely recommend. But I feel like maybe with this one, they probably could have done a bit more. I feel like they always, always include the NARS Orgasm Blush, whether it's small or full size. So there have been just so many new products that have been releasing lately and even if it's a cult classic, there are still other cult classics they could have included in here. But also like, let's just see something new, like something more exciting, you know? But again, if you don't own any of these items and you think you might love it, and it seems like it's a kit you're gonna actually use, then I would say, you know, why not? But just I'm just mentioning this because I feel like I always used to purchase every Sephora favorites kit ever, but with this one, I just felt like it was extra wasteful if I do end up buying it, you know? Because I would have ended up probably decluttering four out of five of the goods so just a kit that i just feel like they could have done a bit better with next i wanted to speak to you guys about the Too faced pumpkin spice second slice sweet sweet and juicy eyeshadow palette this retails for 54 dollars the reviews on sephora are actually like at a three star and i don't know if i've ended up speaking about this palette with you guys in an actual video but i do do know that i mentioned on instagram that i'm going to be skipping out on this mainly because i feel like it almost just reminds me and it's just everyone's i feel like this is everyone's explanation it's so identical to so many previous palettes they released and i love collecting these you know year after year and it's just something that i actually look forward to but when i saw this one i just felt like there was really no effort being put in here everything just looks legit the same um the packaging is cardboard but it's still like a nicer quality cardboard so that didn't bother me as much even though i love when they keep it in the tin package that wasn't such a like con for me it was more that the color story just looked so like a lot of times color stories look repetitive let's be real on here but this one looked overly obvious that it's so repetitive that it was like it almost felt, it would have felt like I would have purchased two of the same palettes and just owned two of the same things, you know? I know that Too Faced has other holiday collections that I personally look forward to. They have a really cute like gummy bear one, a few uh, different kits that include like lip products and just some other ones that look adorable. So those might be on my radar. So maybe a yes for those, but for this one, it was a complete no. Even if I was reviewing every single thing ever, I just would not want to review this because it would feel so uncomfortable even talking about it because it's like what am i really saying in this video this is the same thing <laughs> over and over again and it's kind of like why is this girl being repetitive because i would feel like i'm being so repetitive with what i'm saying um, i have no doubt that this palette is going to go on sale i know it's actually already like about ten dollars off at macy's which isn't the best deal ever 100 percent going to be finding this at tj maxx absolutely no question and it should probably pop up at the ccos the cosmetics company outlet stores I want to say the next probably like i would say within two months okay next we have this palette here by pat mcgrath this is the divine blush plus glow face palette in nude venus i don't know if there are two different color stories to choose from but this specific one is a nude venus and i guess i'll be talking about this one just because i only see this pick on sephora but if there's another one that i'm going to be skipping out on that one as well so this is 62 dollars First thing I don't love about this palette is the way it's set up. Something about it just makes me feel <laughs> extremely uncomfortable. Like, I don't know if it's just a highlighter on the side there, the fact that it's more of like a, like it's a different shape compared to the other ones that are just circled blushes. The setup is just not vibing with me at all. And normally I'm like whatever with everything, but with this, I feel very uncomfortable. <laughs> I actually have two of her trios that she released in the past like year, I want to say. One of them was from the... What's that show called? The Bridgerton one. So I have that one and I have, I think, a different one as well. And I'll be honest, I thought I would actually use them more than I do, but I actually really, really don't. Just the shades in there don't really speak to me as much. There's maybe just one in each palette that I love, but usually with like palettes, I want to know that I can mix and match the blushes. I love most of the shades. I can take it with me traveling. Now I'm actually away and it's not the trio that I chose. So considering the fact that this palette here has just lighter pinky tones more of like a mauve shade a nude shade and then a, a deeper kind of like i don't know slightly like reddish type of shade i feel like i probably would have gotten more use out of these but i also feel like these are not necessarily my favorite formulas ever because i feel like it could be a little bit stiff to apply and sometimes if you do go a little bit heavy-handed um it's it does it only stays in a, on one spot on your face and doesn't necessarily blend out ultra easily 
for me i do want to pick up the hourglass holiday palettes the one with the i think tigers on it so cute or like the butterfly or like even the elephant one just so, they're all so adorable because the hourglass formula is seriously goals in itself everything blends out like a dream come true and even if you go heavy you don't like it doesn't even look like you went heavy because it blends out like butter like a butter machine <laughs> and it actually like lasts as well when it comes to pat mcgrath palettes i know that she does fantastic with those and i know a lot of you guys probably even love her blush formula but for me if i had to compare it to other like luxury brands it's not like my favorite favorite formula ever ever i thought it would be like i said but like i see that it shows when i don't actually pull out her blushes from my drawers and actually like use it to its tea you know so i'm going to be skipping out on that one the final palette that i want to speak to you guys about is from urban decay actually this has some amazing reviews on sephora site but for me i'm actually going to skip 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 this is retailing for 54 dollars it's the naked x robin eisenberg eisenberg is such a jewish name i don't know if this person is jewish or not but it's name. anyway eyeshadow palette last time i said something that oh this sounds so jewish a lot of you guys are like oh no that's not jewish but eisenberg sounds pretty jewish anyways i know a few people who their last name is eisenberg for this one i'm gonna be skipping the last few urban decay palettes i just really have not been just a major fan of i don't love the color story of this one at all you get a decent amount of neutrals which we've seen a gazillion times in palettes that golden type of shade which is not my just not my speed and then the blue tone shades i feel like they look very cool and especially that like matte lighter like periwinkle type of blue just so not my type of color and blue eyeshadow in general i i'm very like iffy about it i did actually just buy the melt cosmetics one that has a little bit of brown and just like lighter champagne tones plus it was like a zodiac one and it was water for scorpio so that one is like hey fine i'll make an exception and occasionally i'll buy blue palettes here and there but it's not like something that i'm like okay run blue run i just noticed that i don't really wear blue eyeshadows that often and also like i said with urban decay the last few palettes i wasn't that into with their naked palettes especially they're very very hit or miss and i really just want a palette that i could use and really just enjoy and have fun with and not feel like it's a hassle to actually use so i don't know if the quality of this one is amazing i don't know if it actually sucks but more than less i want to see most of their naked palettes kind of like they just fall short for me and then also i'm not into the artwork the whole vibe of this palette just it's not really like my speed so it would have been nice to have in my collection just to have all of the naked palettes because i think i actually own most of them and sometimes i want to collect all of them like pokemon type of thing you know but at some point it's kind of like let's get real here are you gonna use this are you not like what's the story okay i'm not really that into it all right so that's pretty much it those are the main few items that i wanted to mention to you guys there's still like a decent like a handful of other items that i'm still just not sure if i'm picking up or not i know i didn't mention and i didn't purchase the new pat mcgrath holiday palette that's on my like it's in the middle there i just don't know if i'm gonna get it but i don't know if i am and then the new Huda Beauty Empowered Palette. Also, I just didn't know if I wanted to discuss because I obviously don't want to say I'm not getting it. And then a week later, I'll be like, hey, I bought this like that. So I really just want to be certain with my decision. And so I might end up doing a part two to this one. As time goes, I'll see. Okay, so let's open up the calculator. The Too Faced Pumpkin Spice Second Splice, <laughs> Splice. <laughs> Palette is 54 bucks. So 54 plus another 54, which is the Urban Decay Robin Eisenberg Palette plus... The Sephora Favorites kit that we discussed is 36 plus Pat McGrath Glow Face Palette is 62. The Natasha Denona Mini Palette is 19, 225 so far. The ABH Mini Glam to Go Eyeshadow Palette, which is $29. And then finally, we have the Patrick Ta Blush Palette, which is 58. So the total is $312. So with tax, of course, especially New York tax, it probably would be like 330, 335, something like that. But I think that's a nice chunk of change um, that I'm going to be saving with products that like it would be nice to have like fine, I'll take it. But like at the end of the day, once I own it, will I actually use it? Will it like will I actually enjoy it? Will it just be taking up space? You know what I mean? So 300 is still 300 and i'm really proud of myself if you're having a hard time either deciding to buy something or you know wanting to save maybe by adding up how much you would spend it would kind of turn you off and you'd be like hey forget it, i just don't need it so it could be a good tactic to use but i hope you guys enjoy this let me know what's up and i'll see you in my next one